Hear ye, hear ye! Thine video hath been sponsored by established titles. Okay, I'll stop. If only I can ramble about my desire to be treated like royalty. In Scotland, there is a time-honored tradition of calling landowners a lord, lady, or laird. And this is where established titles lets me fulfill my dream. They allow you to purchase at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland. Each purchase comes with a unique plot number and a commemorative plaque signifying your achievement. Do you know what that means? I can now be called a lord. You will now refer to me as Lord Tree, first of his name, son of the peeing willow. Any attempts at disparaging my glorious name will be punishable by death. You can officially use the prefix Lord and Lady on almost anything after your purchase. Plane tickets, credit cards, online shopping, dating profiles. Even if you don't wish to engage in flexing your status, each purchase helps to plant a tree around the world thanks to partnerships with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Lord Tree always gives back to his kind. And this also makes a great last-minute gift, even coming in couples packs. Established Titles is running a glorious sale of their goods right now. And using the code TREE in the link below will help you save 10% on top of that. Embrace your inner lord or lady. Fulfill your dream with established titles. Demand grapes! Lord Tree demands grapes! When I say this name, there will be a mix of emotions. Baker Mayfield. He's a lightning rod. You either love his toughness, tenacity, and swagger, or hate the colossal chip on his shoulder and questionable decision-making in the pocket. He's been in the news a lot as of late, hasn't he? Betrayed by the Browns for $235 million guaranteed, many pondered about his future. He's been in football limbo. A starting quarterback who was in danger of not having a starting job heading into the upcoming season. For now, he's at least free from the factory of renewed sadness. Baker's been traded to hopefully greener pastures. So how did we end up getting here? This time last season, it would have been inconceivable to see Mayfield on a different franchise, let alone question his long-term future as a starter in the NFL. Nowadays, though, he has more than a few doubters about his ability. I'll admit when Baker was drafted into the NFL, I didn't like him. It wasn't what he did on the field, but his actions off of it. He gave me Ryan Lee vibes. Now, you can say that I was over-exaggerating his arrest intentions with the press, but people had concerns about his size and how his game would translate at the next level. In a way, Cleveland was the best and the worst place he could have gone. As the number one pick, it was the chance to validate his ambitions and to revive a shithole franchise from the brink of hell itself. On the other hand, he was also going to the walking punchline of the league. Remember where the Browns were back then? Owen 16, the quarterback jersey, perpetual ineptitude, ruining Deshaun Kaiser by rushing him into a starting role, Hugh Jackson as head coach. Remember when the Browns had hope in 2018? When Baker came in cold for an injured Tyrod Taylor? How he slung the ball to help them come back and beat the Jets for their first win since 2016? Yeah, it was the Jets, but still. When he would go on to set the rookie record for touchdown passes thrown, it was a perfect match. Both team and player had massive chips on their shoulder and desired to be something far more than they were. Mayfield was hailed as the future of Cleveland. It was premature as hell, but who do you consider the best quarterback of the Browns before then? Kelly Holcomb? One year of Derek Anderson? It's slim pickings. There were great expectations for Baker in 2019, but a few things undid them. First, himself. He got cocky and complacent. Everyone realized Mayfield only had one move. Roll to the right. Roll to the fucking right over and over and over again. He didn't try to adapt until it was too late. And that would also be because of the human thumb Cleveland trotted out as a coach. Freddie Kitchens never led a team before. He called plays for one half of a season and the Browns arrogantly thought he would be fine managing all of the egos in a locker room. He failed miserably. Would you trust a man who called a fucking draw play on a fourth and nine? Even Ask Madden wouldn't tell you to do that. To be honest, Baker needed that year forced him to realize that he couldn't do it his way. He had to adapt, and he did just that to rebound to form in 2020. Kept the interceptions down, he was a driver of offense, his QBR was top 10 in the NFL. Baker helped to lead the Browns to the playoffs for only the second time since their return to Cleveland. He even did something thought impossible years ago. Helped them aid in Pittsburgh becoming a me. True, it said a hell of a lot more about Pittsburgh than Cleveland, but Baker did what he had to do. Unfortunately, Cleveland would be wanting more. Against Kansas City, the Browns had opportunities to overcome the might of Arrowhead. Their defense was lights out. 
Patrick Mahomes got taken out due to injury. They were a touchdown away from leading and a shot at greatness itself, but Baker couldn't elevate his play. He got outdueled by Chad Henney. It was still an outstanding season, but the grumbling and doubters started to pour in from the outside. Baker is a starting caliber QB, but he isn't going to take you to the promised land single-handedly. He's a folk hero, but not one that wins you a ring without help around him. And in the modern NFL, that's not good enough. Cleveland still loved him, though. And that's all that mattered. Until 2021. First came a grudge match against Kansas City, where Baker still couldn't elevate himself and forced passes to the very end. But where it really hurt? In week two against Houston. And on the interception, the return is coming back. I think it's oh, Justin no. Reed. Baker There's Mayfield man tries to make the tackle, and Mayfield takes the worst of it. This moment ended Baker Mayfield's time with the Browns. Injuries tend to cause change, but it wasn't for the reason you'd suspect. First, consider the ailment he had. A torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder. One that wasn't only a near-complete tear, but it was re-aggravated a month later against Arizona. You don't have to be a quarterback guru to know that the non-throwing shoulder and arm have a huge role in passing mechanics. It helps to stabilize your throw, allows you to get more hip rotation, and helps with pass accuracy. What I'm trying to say is that Baker should have never tried to play with it. Playing with an awkward sling completely fucked up his passing mechanics. He had to relearn them on the fly. His shoulder had to stay locked so the injury wouldn't worsen. There's gutsiness and then there's sheer idiocy. By toughing it out through that shoulder tear, Baker cost himself millions of dollars. He was awful because of it. The ultra mechanics and decreased throw power had forced him to make even worse decisions with the ball. He was being baited into easy interceptions by defenses. Baker turned into a colossal liability simply because of his toughness and desire to win. His own confidence was his undoing. Playing against Pittsburgh, he was cooked. He could do nothing. Once the Browns were eliminated from the playoffs, he finally got shoulder surgery, but it was too little too late. What this shows me is the utter incompetence of the Browns organization. Yes, Baker Mayfield was stubborn and felt like he could play through his debilitating injury. There was no way it should have been allowed to happen. The Browns, Stefanski, Haslam, anyone should have told Baker to put his or their egos aside and heal up. He should have been on IR the moment we realized he couldn't throw properly. But they probably injected him with enough Toradol to be considered a drug mule on those Sundays. Cleveland allowed him to be a detriment on the field all season and suddenly got shocked when he couldn't fucking throw properly. We can't go anywhere with Baker, they cry, even though he was just one of the many problems in the organization in 2021. Was he at fault for the team defense being injured to shit? Was he at fault for the massive COVID outbreak before the Raiders game? The offensive inconsistency you can point at him, but everything else would have been a challenge even if Baker was healthy. I firmly believe that if Mayfield never played with that injury, he would still be the starting QB for the Browns. That dude was a living legend in that city until then. That shoulder tear and the awful film he showed forced Cleveland to make a deal with the devil himself. More than likely with a few happy endings involved. The beloved Deshaun Watson was acquired fresh off a litany of lawsuits in a year away from football for a king's ransom of picks and immediately given $235 million guaranteed. No shit, Baker's pissed. If you put your body on the line and the team you did it for immediately spits in your face, you'd be the same. Once that move happened, Mayfield was never playing for Cleveland again. The fans would hate it, Baker would be sullen, and it would just be awkward as hell. At the end of the day, the Browns had absolutely no leverage in the trade. Everyone knew they were trying to get rid of Baker. Baker wanted nothing to do with the Browns. His contract was gigantic for teams trying to juggle the salary cap, and next to nobody wanted anything to do with him. Things got so dire there were rumors of him being cut. The Panthers nearly traded for him at the NFL Draft, but it fell through in the end due to issues with salary retention. There were a few murmurs of Seattle wanting him, but those were proven to be untrue in the end. Cleveland would face further embarrassment if Baker was going to sit out and be paid not to play in 2022. So they traded him for some tokens in Madden Ultimate Team. He's now a Carolina Panther, as expected for a while for a conditional 2024 fifth round pick. Traded for literally pennies on the dollar. Cleveland even had to eat a chunk of his contract in order for it to go through. An era once thought to be as glorious as the return of football burned like the Cuyahoga. Good news, Browns fans, you now have to go through what the Steelers did with Big Ben. The Panthers are saying there will be a quarterback competition, but Baker's easily the best one on their roster. Look at the shit they were chucking out there last year. Sam Darnold had about three decent games before falling off the map. That injury he got in the middle of the season was a mercy kill. 
After that, they threw a wrecked Cam Newton out there for nostalgia and putting asses in seats. Because it certainly wasn't for his quarterbacking in the year 2021, that's for sure. P.J. Walker wishes he were still on the Houston Roughnecks in the XFL. He struggled that much. The Panthers were near dead last in terms of passing yards, completed air yards per throw, bat throw percentage, and QBR. The offensive line in front of them? All I have to say is that their blindside tackle was Cam Irving. A guard converted from center. Matt Rule was so disheveled and panicked that he fired his offensive coordinator for not running the ball enough. When Christian McCaffrey was injured, under his skilled leadership they would try things like rotating quarterbacks. And rotating quarterbacks in the middle of a fucking game. The new offensive coordinator in Carolina is Ben McAdoo, who knows a thing or two about throwing QBs under the bus. Ben Head Baker is the sixth best QB in the 2018 draft. Behind Mason Rudolph. Once again goes to show you the love-hate relationship with Baker. Don't confuse me with being a fan of Baker Mayfield. His personality rubs me the wrong way and he has severe limitations at quarterback at this level. However, even I can see that Mayfield's been completely fucked over. Dude went from the future of the Browns franchise to exile from Berea in about six months. Everyone thinks he's a bum because he played through a severe injury limiting his ability. He was traded for slightly more than what Case Keenum fetched. He got a seventh. Baker got a conditional fifth after salary retention. It's either going to be Baker having a colossal chip on his shoulder or a self-destruction not seen in years. It'll be fascinating to watch either way. You want to know the best part of all this? Guess who Carolina ends up playing in week one? The Cleveland Browns. The only way this would be even juicier is if they were playing at the dog pound. I honestly hope Carolina wins and Baker throws for over 300 yards and three TDs. I don't care if he sucks the rest of the year, the meme world needs Mayfield to take the biggest shit all over the Browns. It's honestly deserved for how they raw dogged him. You gotta watch Landry down the seam. Mayfield towards the end zone. It is caught. Was he in? Yes. Donovan Peoples Jones. Baker Mayfield taking his shot. And the Browns have retaken the lead.